Hello, welcome to this in-depth tutorial on the Node MCU CH340 pinout and a comprehensive breakdown of the board's components. If you are diving into the world of IoT with Node MCU, understanding the intricacies of this powerful board is crucial. In this video, we will explore every pin, every component, and walk through each and every part of this Node MCU board. So without any further ado, let's get started. So the Node MCU is a widely used IoT development board based on the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. But there's more to this board than just Wi-Fi. It's packed with components that make it a versatile tool for developers. Let's start by identifying the key components on the board. First and the main is the ESP8266 chip. The ESP8266 chip is the brain of the board responsible for processing and connectivity with the Wi-Fi. Then comes the CH340 chip. So the CH340 chip handles the USB to serial communication, allowing your computer to interface with the Node MCU and program the board. Then comes the voltage regulator. So this here AMS 3117 is the 3.3 voltage regulator. This ensures that the board receives a stable 3.3 volt power supply. Then there are push buttons. So these push buttons can be used for resetting the board and changing the programming mode. And also there is another important component, which is the crystal oscillator. So the crystal oscillator provides a uh, clock signal necessary for the ESP8266 operations. Now let's begin to learn the details about each of these components that we just discussed right now in detail. So this is the ESP8266 chip and this chip is the core of the node MCU featuring an integrated TCP IP stack that allows it to connect to Wi-Fi networks. It has a 32-bit processor, GPIO pins for interfacing with peripherals, and supports both SPI and I2C communication protocols. This makes it perfect for IoT applications. This here you see and the arrow pointed out here indicates the built-in LED for the ESP8266. And this here that you see is the PCB antenna trace. Next is the CH340 chip that you can see here. This is the CH340 chip. Okay. The CH340 chip is the USB to serial converter chip, which is essential for programming the Node MCU. When you connect the Node MCU to your computer via USB, the CH340 chip handles the communication, allowing you to upload the code and interact with the board. So this is the CH340 chip. And this is the micro USB connector using which you can connect this board from your USB via a USB cable. Next comes the voltage regulator. So this here is the voltage regulator. Uh, the name of this voltage regulator is AMS 3117 voltage regulator for 3.3 volts. So the voltage regulator is crucial for maintaining a stable 3.3 volt power supply to the board, regardless of variations in the input voltage. This component ensures that the sensitive electronics on the Node MCU, especially the ESP8266 chip, receive the correct voltage, protecting them from damage. Then there are two push buttons here. If you can see, this is one and this is the other. And both have two things written here, flash and RST. So these two push buttons are the reset and the flash push button. So a reset is labeled as RST and the flash is labeled as flash button. Pressing the reset button restarts the board while holding the flash button during power up puts the ESP8266 into a mode where it can accept new firmware. Then the next component is our crystal oscillator. So this you can see here, this is our crystal oscillator. The crystal oscillator is a small component that provides a precise clock signal to the ESP8266. This clock signal is vital for timing operations within the chip, such as executing instructions and managing data transfers. 
Now let's delve into the node MCU spin out. So this here you can see are the pins that we can use for different different operations and understanding these pins is key to interfacing the board with various sensors, actuators and other peripherals. Starting with the power pins, the board has V in pin, G pin, 3V pin and if you can see here the same things are repeating here 3V and G, G is also present here, G is also present here. So these are the power pins. The V in pin is there to help you connect an external power source, usually a 5 volt supply. The onboard voltage regulator then steps it down to 3.3 volt supply. So basically using this V in pin, you can power on the node MCU board from a 5 volt supply. The 3V or also known as 3.3 volt pin is the pin that provides a 3.3 voltage output. So it is not an input pin, it will provide an output of 3.3 voltage, which you can use to power other components in your circuit. And GND pin is essential for completing the circuit. Basically, let's suppose if you are providing the 3.3 volt supply to an electronic component. So 3.3 is the positive voltage supply and GND is the negative voltage supply. Now the next is the digital input output pins. Uh, these digital input output pins that you can see here are labeled as D0, D1, D2 till D8. Okay, so these are the digital input output pins. These can be used for digital input or output and most of these pins uh, support additional functionalities like the D0 pin is connected to the GPIO 16 which is typically used for waking the ESP8266 from the deep sleep mode. Then the D1 and D2 pin are also used for I2C communication and the D5, D6, D7 and D8 pin are also used for SPI communication. Apart from the digital input output pins, there is one analog input pin called A0. So the A0 pin is the sole analog input on the node MCU. It can measure voltages between 0 and 3.3 volt which is useful for reading sensor data like temperature, light intensity or any other analog signals. Now apart from that, there are TX and RX pins. So this TX and RX pins can be used for serial communication. These are connected to the UART interface of the ESP8266 and are used for communication with other serial devices or also they can be used for debugging purposes. Then there is EN and RST pin. So the EN pin is used to enable or disable the 3.3 volt power regulator on the board. By pulling this pin low, you effectively turn off the node MCU. The RST pin can be used externally to reset the board, similar to the reset button that we have. Now the next we have the SK, S0, SC, S1, S2 and S3. These are also called the GPIO 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11 pins. So these pins generally have two functionalities. I will try to explain you in easiest possible way. So if you see here, this is our ESP8266 uh, chip. And in if you want to see here uh, the pinouts for this, this is how the pinouts for this ESP8266 look like. Now inside this, if you see here this, this is uh, the same thing. Now, if you see here, this is the ESP inside the chip and it also has the memory chip here internally connected. Okay. So this pins that we just discussed right now from SK, S0, SC, S1, S2 and S3. So these pins are generally connected to that memory chip. So whenever we program or write any code to the node MCU or the ESP8266, that program is stored in that memory chip. Okay. So generally these pins are uh, internally connected and used for that. But since these pins are also defined as GPIO pins, we can use them as GPIO. But generally they are not used because this may affect uh, the memory of the ESP8266. Okay. But in the data sheet, it is also mentioned that these pins can be used to connect with an external SD card to program the ESP8266 chip from an external SD card. Okay. So this is the, the functionality of these pins 
and i hope right now we have covered all the input output pins here and the pins here okay so we the at the very first we started with the d0 to d, d8 uh, digital input output pins then we discussed the a0 analog input pin okay so this is only an analog input pin this can't provide an analog output pin okay remember that then we discuss about the v in pin which is a 5 volt input pin okay then we have the en and rst pin enable is uh, enable pin when uh, set high will enable the voltage regulator and rst pin will uh, when set high will reset the program on this node mcu board and g pin is the ground pin and the 3v pin or the 3v pin here is the 3.3 voltage pin uh, power and external component okay and the last two pins here are the tx and rx pins so these two pins you can use for serial communication that is uart communication with any other serial device that you have for your project or your circuit okay. so these are all the pins that we have for the node mcu so this is the pin out uh, and uh, uh, one thing that i missed earlier was the pwm pins so generally if you see here wherever there is a wave provided for any pin is uh, indicating that there this pin can be used as a pwm pin uh, which can generate a pwm signal and send it as an output okay so these pins here are uh, also set as pwm pin now one last thing already we have discussed but if you want to know how to power the node mcu so powering the node mcu is straightforward the easiest method is to connect it to your computer using the micro usb cable and uh, this not only powers the board but also allows you to program it alternatively you can provide uh, the power supply uh, to the node mcu by using an external 5 volt supply uh, connecting it to this v in pin or the 5 volt pin okay and uh, connecting the negative to the gnd or the ground pin these are all the descriptions about the node mcu board so in this video we covered every aspect of the node mcu board from its components to its pin out and also we learned about different powering options understanding these details is crucial for developing reliable and efficient iot projects thank you for watching this video i hope you learned something from this and i will see you in the next video